Hey guys, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to NanoSaf. Check this out. This is our browser. We made it. Sweet. It only goes to YouTube. That's all you need, really, right? It'd be better. We should, like, make it go to here. But no. It works great. It works great. Look. <laughs> what? Whoops. What? What's that? Uh, the other problem, the other problem, arguably bigger problem, is, I mean, we got a lot of processes here. If we close the window, it's like, oh, they went away. No, they didn't go away. They just moved down here. They're hiding. They're still around, though. They're zombies now. They'll be here forever. Um, so, that's actually really easy to fix. Just pretend you didn't see this. And then we're going to add a new thing in here, which is case, uh, case WM destroy. Yeah. So, when we click the close button on the thing, it's going to send a destroy. The default behavior, because we're not handling WM close, is going to send a destroy to this window, which doesn't do anything unless, but we can use it to do something. Post quit message. Zero. There. And break. Or we could return. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Default break. Do we need this default here? Is it going to complain if I just get rid of that? It's going to say unhandled or something like that. Anyways. Yeah, so we post a quit message. That posts a message to the thread, the same thread. And then when it gets it here, it's going to say, oh, this is going to return a zero value. We exit out of this loop. We shut down. And then we could return message dot w param, I want to say. And that's like the error code that was signaled. But I mean, we're always just returning zero from here, so it'll always be zero, but it doesn't matter. So there, that should fix it. So now, if I look in here, and then I close this window, I should not see nanosef zombies, and I do not. So it works. Beautiful. So it's going to exit out of here. It's going to run Ceph shutdown. It's going to get out of dodge. I suppose we could do like pclient.reset. I don't know, like, if there's an order. Like, if you got to release this before you call shutdown. It, it didn't seem to complain, so. And, I mean, we should probably, like, free up the window class, but duh, guys, we don't we need to worry about that. This is just a, this is a small program. It is not doing all the good things that you should be doing. It's just showing off the, the meat. So that's one thing. Now the other thing is the resizing. So when we, when our top level window, our host is resized, we got to notify the browser window, the child window that gets created here. We got to notify that, that some resizing is happening. So we get ourselves here a little case, case WM size. So when we get a size message, we got to check some stuff. So first thing we're going to check is the sizing operation minimization. Because that's a, that's a problem for a guy like me. Like if we minimize it and then we resize the Ceph content to the minimize size, which is zero by zero, it's going to break everything. Like the, the layout engine is going to lose its shit. So we say if we're minimized, don't, don't do anything anyways. Like we don't have to do anything. So if we're not, we're only going to proceed if we're not minimized. And we also need a P client to work on. Otherwise, we got nothing to do. So if we got these two things, we need some other stuff. So we need to get the browser out of the client. Browser. That's the thing that holds the window. P client pointer to get browser ah it doesn't exist ah you can't get the browser from the client it's in there it's kind of like in there somehow but you can't get it so we got to give ourselves like a little back door to get at the browser from the client so we got to make some stuff we're actually going to use this thing to do a little customization these things that you create these that inherit from Ceph those are your customization points you put stuff in there to customize uh, and the way you do it, let's take a look here. Let's take a look at Ceph client. It's basically like just a big container and it has a bunch of these functions to return different parts of the system, different components. By default, the behavior of all these functions is to return null pointer, which tells Ceph use the default behavior, whatever you just normally use. And if we want to customize, we got to return something else. We got to return something that implements, you know, Ceph permission handler to customize that behavior. So the one that we want 
in client is the life cycle handler, maybe? I don't know. Let's just start typing stuff and see what IntelliSense comes up with. Uh, public Ceph lifespan handler. I was close. I was close. So here's what we can do. So even without this, let's, let's take it back one step here. Yeah, yeah. This I was supposed to be working with Ceph client. This stuff does not exist on the app. This is a client, John. So yeah, we can implement get lifespan handler and we can return our own custom lifespan handler to handle lifespan things. So we'd have to implement, so we could make another class called nano Ceph lifespan handler inherit from Ceph lifespan in handler. But here's a little shortcut. We can make this same object, the Ceph client, also be a lifespan handler. It's just, oh, you got, you got two jobs now. Public, you also happen to implement the interface for a lifespan handler. Ceph, now we don't have to create two different objects. So now when we re return the custom lifespan handler, we just say, hey, return this, because this thing is also a lifespan handler, funnily enough. And now, because we inherit from lifespan handler, we can override some functions in there. Well, so one of the functions that we have available, if I, I could show you, but you'll just have to take my word for it, on after created. So we get a little function that gets called here after something gets created. I think it's the browser. I think it's the browser. So I don't know why it's not called on after browser created, but whatever. Ceph, the parameter to this thing is a reference to the browser. That's nice. So what we can do is we can say, okay, I'm gonna make a little, I'm gonna make a little piece of member data here, the Ceph browser, and when this handler function gets called, we are going to maintain a reference to the browser. And now that we have that reference in here, we can make our own custom function to get the browser. And there you go. We have now given someone outside access to the browser. And we can do that in here. Now we can call get browser. And if it's not null, then we should have a browser. Now that browser may or may not have a child window. So let's call p browser get the host. I don't know, a browser has a host, and a host has a window. Maybe the host is the window, I don't know, but we're going to get the window handle of the host. And if that is not null, then we've got a window. We can resize the window. So we do the classic Windows API. We're going to get the client rect of our window that has just been resized. Then we're going to set that on the child, the hwin browser. We set that rectangle on that bad boy. And now, that should track. That should track. Let's run our browser. Let's give it the old testeroo. I think it broke. Either that or my internet's dead. Let's try again. Did I break it? I probably broke it. And I think I know why, because I always do this. It's the classic. So why, compiler, did you not tell me about it this time, huh? You seem so eager to talk about like an unannotated fall through, and then I do the one time I do it and it causes a real problem, you're just like, ah, he's got it. It's chill. Zombies hanging out there. All right, try again. There we go. Beautiful. Now check this out. Oh, we got some, we got resizing. You got new technology here. Oh my god, this is going to revolutionize browsing the interweb. All right, there you have it. There's our, our minimally functioning browser, now with added resizing. And uh, we're just clocking in at like 120 lines of code. That's not bad. It's not too shabby. Uh, and you, you now you see the workflow. This is the game loop. Whenever you want to customize something about Ceph, you're probably going to, you know, override one of these getters to return your own custom implementation of some subcomponent. And a little little life hack for you is uh, you can just make the thing also the subcomponent and then you just return a pointer to itself. And uh, yeah, that can make life easier, I don't know. So in some cases you probably want it as a separate class, 
But if you don't, just make it the same class. I don't know. I'm not your mom. Now, as a little bonus, um, not absolutely necessary, but a little optimization here. So, like, we got this child window that's in the browser host or whatever. I don't know. It's going to do all the drawing, so we don't actually have to erase this thing. So, if we get an erase background message, like, we can just ignore it if we know that the browser's got it. So it's kind of like the same sort of song and dance that we got in here, except there's no minimized thing. So it's just if we got a client, and the client's got a browser, and the window handle of the browser is not null, then uh, we can return a non-zero value, return a 1 here, and that signals that, uh, yeah, I handled this. You don't have to do anything. So we're not going to call the default window procedure. We're just going to tell Windows message was handled because the child's got it. That's a life hack for you. Get your children to do the chores for you. Yeah, and that works. That works just the same. It's probably just a little bit more performant. That's all. All right. So there you go. I think that about wraps it up for this video. Um, now we have, you know, again, the world's shittiest browser. A little less shitty than before, but still... Not so great. It's not really what we want to do, though. We're not trying to make a. We're not trying to make a browser. We have those already. Uh, we want to use this to make an application, a desktop application. So there's a couple things we're going to need. Obviously, we're not going to want to load the desktop application from the internet. We don't want to have a need require a net connection in order to use our offline desk application. So we're going to need a way of loading the web content from the disk. That's number one. And number two is we're going to need a way of communicating between, you know, the web content logic side and our C++ application. Because the whole point of making this is because we probably want to do some stuff in C++ and we want to bind that to a UI. So how do we get that binding happening? Those are the two things that I'm going to address. Well, there's actually one more, which is how to make the UI not look like ass, especially when you're not like, you know, a front end designer. So I'm going to show you that too. So we got our work cut out for us. And until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more Nano Ceph.